Men of Reddit, who are your female heroes? Pretended to be Xena all the time as a kid. Marie Curie took one for the team. Her story of thinking she lost 10 years of work, but still returning to her lab to start anew inspired me as a young kid interested in science. And here I lost 4 hours of progress in a game and I gave up sigh. One part of her life that really stuck with me was how she took up her husband's position as professor when he died, becoming the first woman professor at the University of Paris. How she moved on, even though his loss was devastating to her, is just so powerful. Check out the Hadjuijd trials. Maria the Jewess. Hell even Hedy Lamar is a hero of mine because she literally invented the wifi idea and how an aeroplane looks. This should be the top answer. Fearlessly diving into the unknown, using the machine her husband had invented, discovering and recording knowledge that benefits us all today at the cost of her very life, the truest type of explorer there is. There should be statues of her at every nuclear facility, hospital and public park for what she has done, and lost, on our behalf. The manager I had when I volunteered in a charity shop, I was in a very bad place in my life, and she helped to coax me out of my shell and build my confidence, and she told customers who were rude to me to f off, I'm a little person, so I tend to attract jerks, she was so classy while not taking anyone's sh, and she was unflappable in any situation, I aspire to be like her one day, yes this, had a female manager like this, I had lost my little sister when I was 20 and at the time I was in college and working, and I couldn't lose my job and for personal reasons I went back to school and work, Oh and I was living in a city car less an hour and a half from my divorced parents and where the funeral had taken place. So when I decided to go back I wanted to be by myself and isolate and basically pretend nothing happened. I flunked my classes and work was a mess as well. I was already heavy and gained significantly more weight and I was severely depressed. One day I was behind the counter at my McDonald's job. I had worked at Chick-fil-A but they legit fired me for my depression but I digress. And one customer had come up to me to order and I should not bought 3 things on the dollar menu and paid in all pennies. Then forced me to count it. I was exhausted. I was 2 stroke 3 RDS of the way through a 7 hour shift. After I had already been at school for 5 hours and still had to study after work. This was daily at the time. Anyway I was depressed and under a lot of pressure but I digress. Again I had been counting up the pennies but very slowly and she would constantly interrupt my train of thought by complaining how slow I was and seriously looked me in the eyes and said you're a relief up aren't you? And I was just so devastated by that statement that I just said I straight up wasn't going to count her change she was so upset by that that she called my manager over to complain about my service and I told her what exactly happened while I was half crying. She went up to her and went straight savage on her. Saying that I wasn't her whipping boy and that I was working hard on my doctorate, and stuff like that. She really went to bat for me and I will never forget it. I was super vulnerable and could have killed myself any day but at least my work life was easier because of her. You're a real f up aren't ya? Says the one paying in all pennies. Some people. I'm not a Karen but I feel like I'd really like to speak to this manager. We are all Karens on this blessed day. Elizabeth Friedman was a badass mathematical genius who used her code-breaking skills to help bring down some of the biggest mobsters in the 1930s while they were busy running circles around law enforcement. More importantly, she was responsible for breaking up Nazi spirings in the 1940s, particularly in South America, and helped turn the tide of major conflicts that very possibly shifted the outcome of World War II, and she did all of it while being mocked, dismissed and forced to keep her work secret by order of the government. Nobody knew her contributions in taking down the Nazis until after she died and her work was declassified. Everyone should know this amazing woman who sought neither accolades nor credit for doing what her male counterparts couldn't even begin to comprehend. Thank you for posting this. On a whim I picked up the book The Woman Who Smashed Codes a few weeks ago and holy sh what an incredible woman and incredible story. Her husband takes a lot of credit for the work they did but only because most of what she contributed was still classified until more recently. Highly recommend this book and or her life story for anyone who loves history and code breaking. Simone Jitz. Her mentality around building shtai things intentionally to make it okay to not always succeed helped me with similar performance anxiety. She's also a very good person. Maintaining her positivity while having a brain tumor removed is one of the most impressive things I have ever witnessed. 
Very few people could do that. Mary Shelley. She was the daughter of two very famous authors, married an even more famous poet, and most of her circle was comprised of famous, male, writers like Lord Byron and Lee Hunt. Despite this, she still held her own and wrote a world-renowned work of literature that is arguably far more influential than anything Percy or Lord Byron. Shh. The only people who read Byron or Percy Shelley in their entirety are academics like me. But everyone has heard of Frankenstein. She basically pioneered two genres in one lifetime. See Fee and Dystopian with Frankenstein and The Last Man. No it wasn't actually Mary Shelley that wrote The Last Man. It was Mary Shelley's monster that wrote it. Mary Shelley was the scientist that created Mary Shelley's monster. Don't worry though, it's a common mistake. Sophie Scholl, active member of a non-violent resistance group against Nazi Germany. If I remember correctly, she was executed for distributing pamphlets promoting her cause. She stood up for others even in the face of death. I deeply admire that. The real damage is done by those millions who want to survive. The honest men who just want to be left in peace. Those who don't want their little lives disturbed by anything bigger than themselves. Those with no sides and no causes. Those who won't take measure of their own strength. For fear of antagonizing their own weakness. Those who don't like to make waves or enemies. Those for whom freedom, honor, truth, and principles are only literature. Those who live small, made small, die small. It's the reductionist approach to life. If you keep it small, you'll keep it under control. If you don't make any noise, the boogeyman won't find you. But it's all an illusion. Because they die to those people who roll up their spirits into tiny little balls so as to be safe. Safe. From what? Life is always on the edge of death. Narrow streets lead to the same place as wide avenues, and a little candle burns itself out just like a flaming torch does. I choose my own way to burn. Sophie Scholl. She was arrested by the Gestapo and executed with other members of the White Rose Group, by guillotine. She was otherworldly brave. Debbie Rinhavi of Laporte, Texas. She's a retired Southwest Airlines captain, longest running member of the US aerobatic team has competed in 15 world championships and is on the board of directors of the International Aerobatics Club. She's also been inducted into multiple aviation halls of fame. More importantly, as an FAA designated examiner, she tested me and granted my private pilot's license. She's accomplished, smart as all get out and an all-around great person. Bar I feel like this won't get seen but maybe someone will. Constance Tipper. She is an absolute unsung hero in materials science. During WW2 the US began the astonishing all-welded Liberty ship program which had never been done before to supply the UK with essential supplies. Problem was some of the ships would catastrophically, and at times fatally, break in half out of nowhere. The photos are astonishing. Many feared it was the welds and almost stopped the program which would have been catastrophic for supplying the UK in need. Tipper managed to prove it was in fact the type of steel they were using was going through a ductile brittle transition. Below a certain temp the steel was incredibly brittle and in the cold waters of the Atlantic combined with the twisting of the waves it would snap ships into out of nowhere. The test she developed is to this day known as the Tipper test and still used. Thus her work saved the Liberty ship program and kept Britain supplied. She was also the first full-time fellow of the engineering department at Cambridge University. She was the first person to use a scanning electron microscope to study fracture faces. And she dealt with and fought through the intense sexism of her being a female engineer. Once invited as the keynote speaker at a dinner for her fantastic work that impressed the Royal Society. But about to attend was disinvited because the society members thought she was a man and got a note basically saying no women allowed sorry. Here's a box of chocolates instead. I'll be honest I don't know how a period drama hasn't been made about her yet. She is an absolute hero in material science and deserves so much more recognition. Am female. Went to material science camp with mostly boys before becoming discouraged because I was in the minority as a girl and didn't feel welcome. All the instructors were also men. I wish someone had mentioned her story to me. Maybe I would have been more inclined to stick with material science. It was really interesting and I learned a lot, but I didn't feel welcome enough to want to continue. I know that sounds kind of lame, but it's real. Hedy Lamar, actress who also invented a frequency hopping spread spectrum communication for torpedo guidance. My mom, met a Mexican man in Tucson, had a baby with him, 
I wasn't even three months old and she decided to move to Mexico with my dad so I could be raised with family. Hers was really abusive and my dad is one of 12 siblings who all love each other. She moves to Mexico, learns Spanish, and picks up a job teaching English. 10 years go by and now she is the head of the bicultural department in the most prestigious college in the state. The sole breadwinner of our household and somehow still the most involved parent. Tried to move us all to the US when I was 10. My dad was deported the second our plane landed. Mom had to start over in the US while being a single mom. Pulled her together. Worked two jobs. Could afford to send us to Mexico every summer to be with family. Saved up for a house. And now is the head of the health department in our city. All the while raising both of her sons with so much love and patience it's unreal. She is the best role model I've ever had in my life and is such a refined badass. I'm grateful every day that she is my mom. My mom doesn't have as awesome of a backstory as yours, but my mom is my female hero too. Thanks for sharing. Your mom sounds awesome. Harriet Tubman, tiny, 5 feet tall, illiterate former slave, who was a spy for the North, worked as a battle strategist, and freed over 300 slaves. Absolute badass. Emmy Nova, absolutely the most significant mathematical physics result of all time. For those who don't know, she proved that symmetries in a system directly mean a derivable conservation law. Conservation of linear momentum? That's a direct result of here being the same as there. Conservation of angular momentum? That's a direct result of facing this way being the same as facing that way. Conservation of energy? That's a result of this moment in time being the same as that moment I'm time. Absolutely beautiful and brilliant result. Yelena Malayutina. WW2 Soviet bomber pilot who was hit by shrapnel and still finished the mission and managed to land the bomber and then going under stomach surgery. You can listen to her story on BBC WW2 Witness Podcast. My late grandmother. At 54 she decided to become a cop because she wanted to help people on a personal level. So she quit her clerical job and trained and trained and eventually joined a PD, where she was shortly fired for refusing to ruin people's lives over things she didn't think warranted it, like kids with marijuana and stuff. She would just make people stomp it out on the road or take their paraphernalia. She would personally drive people released from jail to AA meetings, help them find housing and even put them up for a short time if needed. She ended up working at a very small PD about an hour from where she originally lived and moved out there and even though she's been gone for almost 8 years people still know of her out there. A lot of people talk about doing sh but she really did it. She was one of the bravest, most compassionate people I've ever met and probably ever will meet. She did all this in spite of my grandfather opposing her every step of the way. In fact they never divorced but did separate. They're boomers. She was just a really strong amazing woman. Rosalind Franklin. Dolly Parton. She's brilliant, brave, determined, and generous. Her charity work is incredible, and she's quite progressive when that's not her cultural background. I admire anyone who had to think out their views and go against the grain, much more than someone who has perfect politics because those views got approval in their community. Dolly Parton is my absolute hero. She's insanely talented, helps the world. And does it all while being as humble as possible, denying the Medal of Freedom twice his legendary status to me. Came here to say this, genuinely cares about people but doesn't care what people think of her. Lived in East Tennessee for a few years and you probably would not get away with bad mouthing her around there and for good reason. She's a legend. Dolly would quite literally employed a few towns and pulled them out of poverty. Not to mention the net positives the tourism industry that's been built up around her establishments. Sabine Schmitz, RIP you absolute legend, anyone who ever says women shouldn't be in motorsports, first I'll smack them around, and then I'll load up the video of her tearing around the Nürburgring in a Ford Transit van screaming at all the supercars who were slowing her down. Carol Kay and Carol King, great musicians. Lucille Ball didn't take no f inch, did she? She did it all at a time when women weren't allowed to do f in any of it. And she just said oh, is that right so anyway, pretty badass. For a second I thought you meant Lucille Bluth and I was super confused. Here's some money, go see a Star War. My mother taught me to give it your all no matter what the circumstances. My grandmother's taught me that service is the greatest form of love and honor. My sister taught me how to treat other people the best, even if they don't always deserve it. 
My first boss taught me that true leadership means taking the first step. My wife taught me that hope is never in vain. My daughter teaches me life is full of joy if you know where to look. My life is full of female heroes. This comment is so wholesome you made me cry. Go stand in the corner and think about what you've done. Shirley Chisholm. Marie Curie. Eleanor Roosevelt is one. She championed human rights and anti-poverty programs. Hedy Lamarr. She was basically a female Bruce Wayne. She was a hardcore engineer, scientist, model, actress, linguist, entertainer, and humanitarian. At the same time as she was one of the highest paid actresses in the world and considered one of the most beautiful women in the world, she was engineering secret groundbreaking tech in her trailer between scenes. She invented frequency hopping that was used to target submarines and enforce the blockade of Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis and help prevent Armageddon. It's also part of how GPS, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi work. One of the best stories about her is that some rich dude was hitting on her by telling her he could get her on a Concord flight but she turned him down saying a woman can fly faster without a man dragging her down, then called the engineers and helped improve the design to make it faster and more stable. She was a prolific inventor, creating new items like fluorescent pet collars, proximity fuses, food flavorings, and other items until she died in 2000. Here is more about her. Amelia Earhart. Yosef Zaymalala had more courage than all the men in her village put together. As a child she stood up to the Taliban, looked one their members straight in the eye and told them they can f right off if they think they can stop women from getting an education. She took an AK-47 round to the face for it and still continues her fight today. That same year Caitlyn Jenner was voted woman of the year which still pisses me off. Jeanne d'Arc. She carried the French army on her massive shoulders to take back the kingdom and take Orleans back from the Englishman. As cliche as this is, my mother, single mom raising two kids, my older siblings, with no degree and living off food stamps, worked her a off to support my older siblings, both of which earned master's degrees, continued to support myself and my younger brother who are both in college currently, taught herself how to be successful in real estate and now owns her own business. Statistically, my siblings and I should not be as privileged as we are today, and I owe all of it to my mom. Jane Goodall, Gian Fossey, Dolly Parton, Joan Jett, Ripley from Alien Aliens, a believable character who acts like a regular person, not full of BS Hollywood bravado, when everyone else who are louder and more badass get taken out and she is the only capable person left she rises to the occasion and finds a way to prevail. Audrey Hepburn. Malala Yousafzai. 